Hello, I'm Paul Lehman with the NICE Back Office Proficiency Solution Team. Today, let's talk about the future. More specifically, what do you know about it in terms of your workforce needs and how do you prepare? In many back office environments, workforce forecasting and capacity planning is still done manually using Excel sheets. And these will typically involve estimates based on the average number of work items that come in per day you know, over the last three months, along with a handling time standard per work type. While this makes a lot of sense in theory, when you think of all the real life complexities, a manual forecast will unavoidably leave out a lot of factors and it will cause that forecast to be less accurate than what is possible. Because your work volume can change based on the time of year, special events, positive or negative growth in volume, for example, it's simply too much for an Excel sheet to handle. So what's really helpful about using a computerized solution, like the back office proficiency solution, is not only that you can use a massive database of historical data, but also that you can apply very sophisticated algorithms to it and create very accurate forecasts. Let's look at an example of how this can be done. Okay, so what you see here is our personnel planner capability where we have our forecast for the account maintenance work type for 2016. And you'll notice that in this first column you'll see every month of the year from January to December 2016. And then we have our forecast of how many work items we plan to receive every month. And that's taking into account all of those great real life factors such as growth rates, seasonality, rates of change, those type of things. We have a second level of forecast in our work items handled and that's how many work items we plan to handle based on the staffing that we have today. And you'll notice that's over here in the actual FTE column. So we have 11 people in our back office today handling the account maintenance. We take into account the average handling time that's planned and your service level goal, which is four days here, to calculate how many staff are actually required to meet that service level goal. And based upon how many uh, staff you have, we actually show you how many of the work items we plan to get completed during that month. And then the backlog, which shows you how much work will go to the next month. And so we also, if we slide over here to the right, here's where we have our capacity planning, which lets you see how many people you are plus or minus to the plan in this FTE requirements column. So for example, uh, I need 11 and 3 quarters of a person uh, for the month of February. I only have 11, so I need an additional 3 quarters of a person. That's okay. We can put in new hire plans to take that into account. We can also look at the real life effects that happen and we know in this case that we expect a competing company to come into town and that our attrition, which is usually pretty low, is going to go up. So in April and May and June, we expect to lose a person each of those months to this new office in town. So that adjusts automatically your plus and minus of staffing. So now we can do our new hire planning. Uh, we know that we probably need to add a person in the month of February, okay? And then we probably need to add a person in the month of May, another person in the month of June, and then you'll see here in July, we probably need to add six people uh, because our volume is going up, and then another maybe three people in August. And so with that, you get to see how well the plan uh, matches the requirements. Another way to look at this that's very helpful is instead of looking at this as a grid, we can look at this as a chart and we get a real nice uh, visual clue as to how well our planning is going. So we can see in the blue column here how many people we actually have compared to how many we need month over month. And then the purple line shows you the over under line, right, of how well we're staffing, how well we're plus or minus. If I scroll down, I can also see this in regards to the work volume, right? How many work items I'm receiving, I'm planning to handle every month, and my backlog. And, and I know that my backlog here is well under control with this staffing plan. 
using the personnel planner to adjust your forecast and capacity plan to the changing circumstances on the fly has several very clear advantages. Obviously, when you're not overstaffing or understaffing your back office, you're neither paying for employees who sit around and do very little or struggling to meet your service goals with too few staff. But more importantly, because real life changes are not going away anytime soon, this is a great tool for planning for any scenario that comes your way. I hope you have found this session useful. Don't forget to check out the rest of our back office proficiency solution hands-on videos in the link below. Thank you for your time.